All right, welcome to episode 19 of the Downtown Podcast. We were lucky enough to get some pizza before the show started. Thank you to Radio City Pizza, but I want to start by thanking our beer sponsor, the most important piece of this show. And uh, this is from, so Miles is the one who sponsored it this week uh, from San Francisco New Tech. They are throwing an event out at the Innovation Center called the Las Vegas Awesome New Tech. And it's going to be happening on May 2nd. And what they're looking for is startups, so tech startups to demo their product. Um, Ticket Cake, the company I'm a part of, has already applied. We're not sure if we'll be presenting yet. But the benefit of even just applying for any of the tech companies watching is that you get three free tickets just for applying, whether or not you're chosen. And for everybody else, they can still buy them on TicketCake.com. But this is a great chance to like get your product out in front of people um, to support uh, Miles and everything he's doing. And I want to have a good showing just from downtown Vegas and show them how strong our tech scene is. So make sure to follow New Tech Tour on Twitter, so at New Tech Tour. And uh, buy your tickets on TickyCake.com if you're not going to uh, bring your demo, but I definitely recommend you guys talk to your tech friends and demo your product. All right, so thank you for the beer, New Tech. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so I want to jump, I want to jump into the news roundtable now. Um, I am Dylan Jorgensen, the CTO at Ticky Cake. I am joined by James Wong. He's going to talk about the Reset Project. Melissa Volkelman, our co-host. And Troy Evans, you remember you guys sponsored an episode way back in the day, and now we're going to talk about where you're getting with Project Vesto. Um, but before we do that, there's one quick announcement. Next week, we will not be filming, so next Thursday, uh, we can't film because the host and the editing crew will be in Reno, and I am the editing crew, so uh, you know, I'll be gone. But I'm going to be down there presenting a TEDx. Um, I'm really excited for it. It's going to be called Engineering Happier People. I'm going to compare... Uh, if anybody knows Joseph Campbell's concept of the hero's journey, but it's like this core structure that can be found in a bunch of the famous stories. And I'm going to compare some of that to what it's like living here, and I'm really excited for that. But um, just keep in mind that if you come up here looking for free beer, you won't find it. Not next <laughs> week. Okay, so let's start talking to James Wong. So I want to hear about uh, some of these announcements with the um, Vegas Real Food Project happening at EAT. Thanks. Thanks for having me here today. Yeah. I think... Uh, Everyone has a certain amount of frustration of finding good, healthy food, mm -hmm. where to buy it, where to get it on a regular basis. And uh, things have gotten so complicated out here, uh, especially organic, not grass-fed, vegan, paleo, what? I don't, <laughs> I don't even know right. what to do. So uh, what, what we wanted to do, me and a group of uh, volunteers, vegan chef Donald, out there oh, in the yeah. audience, uh, started a community-based group called the Vegas Real Food Project. What we want to do is uh, food education, food advocacy, okay. um, as outreach to the community, uh, providing lots of education, showing the diversity of uh, Las Vegas Valley, chefs, restaurants, farms, food purveyors. And uh, we're going to do it with our first event, May 19th. Okay, yeah. And it sounds like you guys are already on your way, right? I know we're hosting tickets on Ticket Cake, and you've already sold out of the $80 tickets, the couple tickets. Yep. So you're just down to the singles, and I know um, Ticket Cake's going to be there supporting. But um, why is it, it's going really well. What's, what, how's it catching on? It, I, I don't know. Yeah, you, you don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, I guess, people want real food, huh? No, you know, you know what's great is um, we've put together some really – simple events. Um, all you do is got to get together, have some good food, and be neighborly. And I think that's why it's caught on, because it's so simple. So our concept is five chefs, five farms, five courses. Okay. We're pairing up a local chef with a local farm to create a course for the dinner. We're going to expose everyone to the chef, the farm, the food, the education, all in one dinner. All the profits are going to create a change now. Uh, the dinner is in oh, honor okay. of Jamie Oliver's food revolution. But create a change now is doing some great stuff. They're uh, building organic gardens and providing education to public schools. Well, that's great. OK. So it's all going to charity, huh? Yep. All right. Well, there you guys support it. You like real food, Troy? I do. Oh. You need to be at the dinner. Yeah, I'm you need to be at the believe dinner. Me and my stomach. Right. Maybe you'll celebrate after you get this 100K, huh? Right. <laughs> okay. So, Troy, you've been uh, making a lot of progress as the uh, Project Vesto finalist. But tell us, um, what can the community do to keep helping? And uh, if you win, what are you going to do with that money? $100,000. Well, um, 
Definitely the community can help by participating in the voting process when that starts. We don't have the news on that yet, so when we get the date on um, that, we're going to send it out on Twitter and whatnot so people can find out more about it. Um, so you want I'll, people to follow you on Twitter? F follow Best us way? on Twitter, at Liz Sanity. Okay. And, um, you know, when they, I don't know how many people are familiar with Vesto, but um, basically they had a statewide competition and 230 different businesses uh, presented uh, startups, and we were one of 12 finalists. Now, I'm a little disappointed that they picked seven from Reno and five from Vegas. Ah, oh, so, jeez. You know, we definitely, sounds to me. Like, I, sounds a little rigged <laughs> to me, too, but we definitely have to represent for Vegas and um, put a good showing out there and let them know that, you know, this is where the business is happening in the state of Nevada. So, uh, when we win with the support of the community, we are going to use the 100000 basically to continue to develop the product. We're going to have a mobile app coming out for Liz Sanity, so I'm really excited about that um, so people can do it on their iPhones and Androids yeah. and whatnot. Um, and we're going to uh, be also putting out a Facebook app for it as well. That's great. And what do you think got you to the finals? I mean, is it just great pitch or you think it's just product or combination? Um, Probably helps that my wife is really attractive. Okay. She, was, she, she was in a room with me, you know. But um, we right. they, they used a different um, method that I hadn't used before, which was the business uh, model canvas. Oh, where yeah, yeah. Um, so it was it was a one sheet it's basically method, business yeah. plan. So um, we basically just practiced that pitch, and um, it worked out well for us. All right, yeah, get rid of those business plans, man. Now you have a business model canvas, you know, one page, editable, quicker. I, I wish I would have known that, you know, <laughs> 40 hours of business plan when typing later. You know? Yeah, you learn the hard way, you learn it the right. best. So, all right, Melissa, talk to us about uh, what's going on with Nevada's Big Give. Yeah, so Nevada's Big Give is, uh, it's, uh, it's on April 25th, and it's a 24-hour period online where you can donate to your favorite cha or local charities. And they're trying to raise a million dollars on that day, so it's really ambitious. But um, the top charities that have the most unique donors actually get a bonus on top of that. So they get an extra $7,500 for the first, uh, the top, you know, charity. So on top of your unique donations, which could just be like five, ten bucks they'll get this extra bonus. So I know CoLab, um, which is an arts district, is participating as well. So if anyone has been you know, CoLab or has heard of it, they do a lot of events down here, I'd suggest donating to them, because that's personally what I'm going to do. But they host architects and designers and really embrace that kind of design and side, which I'm really excited about. But it's a it's really ambitious uh, donation period. So if you search for Nevada's Big Give online, um, you'll definitely find it and participate on the 25th. But it's a pretty cool project. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to move on to the uh, interview section. But uh, James and Troy, I appreciate you guys coming out and talking thank to you. us. And uh, thank you guys. Appreciate you for the podcast. Yeah. Good luck. You guys rock. I love you guys for clapping in every time. He's so solid. You have them trained. All right. Well, you clap in for this dog this time. So unfortunately, we couldn't have our actual guest here. Um, it was Nina. I don't know if you guys know the story, but this is her dog. And um, it recently just got stolen, and she was reunited this week. So it's kind of a heartwarming Yay. story, which we love. Um, so this, dog, this dog's name is Mac. A lot of you might recognize him. He's a miniature Doberman pitcher. And he was stolen just a little while ago. Now, Nina came to talk about this yesterday, so when you guys watch the video, we will have the full interview with her. But uh, basically, the story goes like this. She works over at Fremont Studio East, um, and they, she's got this dog that's always hanging around there. He's super well-trained and always sticks by her side. And maybe about five, ten minutes after him not being around, they started stressing out. A lot of people that worked there started like looking all over. And um, after a little while after that, they decided to look at the video footage from out back. Yeah. And they were able so to find... security cameras. Right. Yeah, and, and there'll be video... You can see footage of that if you guys uh, watch this video next week. And it was on Channel 3 News. But this video footage caught this woman who just parked real quick and like kind of gave it the look, you know, and then was like, come here, come here. And the dog's like, mm, maybe, no, maybe. Thanks. And then she like sort of looked around and then grabbed the dog and actually put it in the car and, and drove off. So as soon as she found out the dog was stolen, um, they did everything they could on social media. They contacted the police. And um, it's actually, this is really a heartwarming story because at this point, the, everybody, you guys probably already mostly know, but the social media went nuts and everyone started looking for 
this car because it was in they had, they had some video footage of the car and some just random lady yeah too. and the weird thing is like kind of like a detective or something yeah, somebody right, yeah somebody noticed that the, there's one hubcap that's a little weird on the front left um, so everybody was like, if you see a hubcap off on this tan Corolla or whatever it was. Yeah, it's just and time. yeah, so, so, and about a week went by and um, Nina thought she had lost him. Poor Mac. Or, or, yeah, probably for, for <laughs> forever, it seemed like. I mean, after a week, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of hope. But um, they spotted the car in a parking lot not too far from here. And um, they just started staking it out, right? So if you guys were following <laughs> on social media like we were, we all, we went over there and there's maybe maybe 30 or maybe 20 people or so from the Vegas tech and or just Vegas downtown community that were all waiting by this car. The police showed up, <laughs> then the different news stations showed up and they were just, just waiting for this just car. Waiting, yeah. yeah. Just like, she was just like, uh, right. We thought maybe she was in the golden spike and everyone was like scoping it out. Yeah, and we that's kept, not yeah. shady at all. No. <laughs> yeah. And we kept thinking we'd see her, but we didn't know. So we'd like, uh, oh, it was really fun. But the, um, but the, but the main point is that eventually she did, um, come out and she actually wasn't in the casino. It turned out this girl, was just um, her and her boyfriend, I think, and friend were partying over here on Fremont East. So they ended up coming back, and they're kind of partied out like late at night to this whole camera crew. And we thought we'd <laughs> maybe uh, show you a little clip. They, the, the police uh, uh, followed her back to her house where they found they found the dog. And this, these are going to be clips from the video when it comes up. I didn't want to go through the whole thing. It takes a little too long. But I wanted to show you guys this clip. You can see the TV of, um, of them getting reunited. So that's Nina's boyfriend. They get their dog back. Yeah, this is a, this is a heart warmer. Aww. He's a man's man, but he's got a few tears, you know? This is so good. Family tears. <laughs> yeah. So the, and the thing we also wanted to talk to you guys about was that uh, this wouldn't have happened without so many eyeballs, right? This is totally a crowd so sourcing kind of um, heart warmer, so... You should be proud. I mean, one of the cool things about living in a community uh, like this really is that um, is that you have so many people that support you in everything you do. You know, I mean, the place where we came from in Utah, like, oh, it's was... <laughs> a little better. The eyes open. Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> that's a good one. That's that's a good shot. <laughs> Anyways, so that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to say I think it's cool, you know. But yeah, but everybody should remember that. Like anybody else who has things like this happen, I mean, you can just blow up our Facebook. Yeah, you can call upon social media around here, and people just jump to action. So, so thanks to Nina. So we appreciate you coming out. So it's good. Okay. Fluid. the audience, now's your chance to get your hands dirty. Sin Shop will be hosting craft night every Tuesday night starting at 7 p.m. While the night is focused on crafting disciplines, everyone is welcome to hang out. After that on the 4th, the lovely Moxie Maven Alexia Vernon will be hosting Moxie Saturday, The Art of the Pitch. Whether you're developing your first pitch for the first time or looking to strengthen your existing one, you'll leave with actionable strategies for honing your content, utilizing her unique and effective approach. It starts bright and early at 9.30 a.m. at the Beacon Academy, and be sure to claim your spot on TicketCake.com. That evening, for a change of pace, check out Map and Atlases playing at Beauty Bar. The Chicago natives are known for their unique style that melds the technicality of progressive rock and the idiosyncrasies of art rock. Be sure to check out their song, Solid Ground Online, and sign up for tickets on TicketCake.com. After that, it's time to get your dancing shoes on. Starting at the 7th and every week after that, will be Swing Dance Tuesday starting at 7 p.m. at the Artifice. Frankie Tease, who is here the other week, will be the lovely hostess. Tickets are $10 or $5 with the industry password, but to get that, be sure to follow her on Twitter at Frankie Tees. Now let's hand it off to Charles to talk a bit more about First Friday. And do not steal his Chanel glasses. Do yeah. not no, steal no, my no, glasses. That, that sentence. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Let Torture. alone my dog. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> All right, so let's talk First Friday, man. We uh, want to hear what the theme is. We want to hear um, just about what to expect. And Okay, well, the theme this month is science and art. Ooh. So you can expect to see some really <laughs> exciting installations in all our intersections. Um, some of them we can't announce yet. But as usual, we'll have a Disney fine artist out uh, through the Chuck Jones experience at the Kids Zone. You can learn to paint through social paintbrush, tons of free art classes. Uh, last month, if you missed the ballet flash mobs. Oh, that was so awesome. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? It was amazing. Yeah, it was 
hundreds of people stopping in yeah. the street to actually engage with the ballet, which is kind of rare. Um, we also had tons of performance art through all the streets last month. Tiger dances, kung fu Jeez. demonstrations, and lots of people just kind of came out with uh, hula hoops, and everyone was just performing in the streets because we were celebrating performance art. So you'll see a lot of that. Of course, Sin Shop will be out and hopefully showing off some of their makings. Um, yeah. Like that, Sin Shop made that for us. Oh, did Sin Shop yeah. made that? Yeah, that was a Austin gift. Closed, too. I always try to explain what a maker is, so maybe <laughs> right, someone in this room can really give me like the <laughs> yeah. talking points on okay, that. Yeah, we're missing yeah. Pablo and Susan this week. <laughs> where, are where are you guys? Yeah, where are you guys? Which camera is that? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in trouble. Um, okay, so May 3rd is the next one. Um, people can expect tons and tons of wildness. How yeah, many, how many I mean, people do you get to this? I mean, well, this last event we had close to 30,000 people. 30, In a year and a half, we've grown yeah. it from 8,000. So we're about to expand our footprint yeah. because it was a little too crowded last month. And there's a lot of really exciting announcements happening over the next two months. Um, you know, 25 food vendors, over 170 artists. We've got something really for everyone the kids zone, the green zone, if you want to know about green industry or what water conservation, and it's always really fun. There's a bike valet. Um, nice. Welcome Tent was a candy store last month. You'll have to stay tuned for what it will be this month. So it's really exciting. You never know what to expect okay, from us. Okay, and then where can people, what's the best place to learn? FirstFridayLasVegas.com? FirstFridayLasVegas.com, all spelled social down. Media. We have social media. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, at FirstFridayLV. Sometimes I drop little hints on my Twitter, so I'm at Charles Ressler. Okay. Um, you can follow us on Instagram to see really cool images of things going going on throughout the week and yeah that's cool okay well we'll definitely be checking it out so we appreciate you coming by and uh, appreciate the audience for coming out thank episode you 19. thank you thanks for having me yeah it's yeah. Pleasure. glad you made it up downtown project Vegas we the hardest yeah our ride all right is downtown we running this rest of y'all just running let's creeping on and come up to Vegas share we in this bitch Followers remember like a flashback Vegas tech Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag